What's up guys, it's Dr. Price, and I'm here to help you prepare for the USMLE. I'm the CEO and founder of Action Potential Mentoring, and I'm currently in vascular surgery. So let's get this started. Thank you again for joining, and let's learn and let's get better together. All right, so let's talk about some of these labs that you really need to keep in mind. So we talked about, uh, if you scroll up here, we talked about what happens to your sodium, potassium, and hydrogen ion levels. So sodium goes down because you don't have aldosterone. Sodium goes up because you, or sorry, the potassium goes up because you don't have aldosterone. And then the hydrogen also goes up because you don't have the aldosterone. All right, so you get this non-ionine gap metabolic acidosis. All right, so this is basically an adrenal cortex damage. Uh, we talked about it's either from autoimmune, it's from a tuberculosis infection, or it's from some kind of an acute hemorrhage. All right, so what do you think here is gonna be your ACTH level? All right, so your ACTH is going to be elevated. So on your labs, I want you to think of increased ACTH. All right, and so where's ACTH released from? Well, that's going to be released from your pituitary gland. And so your pituitary gland realizes it's like, hey, we're not making any of these adrenal hormones, so let's stimulate it. So it just ramps up its production of ACTH to try and stimulate the adrenal gland. Okay, so really, really important to know is ACTH is elevated with primary adrenal insufficiency. That's the only kind of adrenal insufficiency that it's gonna be elevated in. So everything we've talked about so far is primary adrenal insufficiency because it's primarily talking about the adrenal gland. All right, it's not talking about any other gland in the pathway, it's only talking about the adrenal gland. So let's talk about secondary and tertiary adrenal insufficiency. All right, so if we break it down into primary adrenal insufficiency, the gland that's affected is going to be your adrenal gland. And that's basically the same with almost any disease that says this is primary blank. It's primarily talking about the adrenal gland because it's primary adrenal insufficiency. All right. Secondary adrenal insufficiency, the gland that's damaged here is going to be your pituitary gland. So gland affected here is pituitary because this is kind of the pathway is like, here's your brain, all right? So it's up in your head, you got your brain chilling and you have your adrenal gland here, or, or sorry, your pituitary gland here. So you have an anterior pituitary and then a posterior pituitary. Remember the anterior pituitary is gonna release ACTH, which comes down and it stimulates your adrenal gland to produce your aldosterone, your cortisol, and your sex steroids, like we mentioned. Okay, so the thing is, is if we're talking primary insufficiency, the problem is right here. If we're talking secondary adrenal insufficiency, the problem is one step prior. So it's actually your pituitary gland that's the problem. So what's actually low in your secondary adrenal insufficiency is your ACTH, because you can't produce any of it from your pituitary gland. So here you look for low ACTH levels, all right? Whereas with your primary adrenal insufficiency, like we said, your pituitary is not gonna be affected at all. It's gonna actually be able to ramp up its production, okay? Because if your adrenal gland is shot out, it's basically damaged. So your anterior pituitary has to work harder to make more ACTH to stimulate that non-functional adrenal gland, all right? So with primary adrenal insufficiency, you have elevated ACTH. With secondary adrenal insufficiency, the pituitary itself is damaged. So you have a low ACTH, and you're therefore going to have low stimulation of your adrenal glands. So you have low aldosterone, low cortisol, et cetera. Okay? So that's basically the, the whole role here is just think one step prior is damaged. What about tertiary adrenal insufficiency? Okay, so tertiary, let's write this in here. So tertiary adrenal insufficiency, where's the organ that's affected? All right, so the organ that's affected is actually the hypothalamus. So it's even one step prior. So secondary, we said, was the anterior pituitary, and then tertiary is going to be the hypothalamus. And remember, that's the gland that's right on top of your pituitary gland. So tertiary it would be right here. Okay, and so what do you think your hypothalamus releases? Well, your hypothalamus releases your CRH, your corticotropin-releasing hormone, okay?
And so your corticotropin releasing hormone causes your anterior pituitary to release ACTH because it's called anterior adrenal corticotropin hormone. Okay, so CRH comes from your hypothalamus, ACTH comes from your anterior pituitary, and they're going to stimulate your adrenal gland to release the adrenal hormones. Okay, so if you have tertiary adrenal insufficiency, think about your hypothalamus is suppressed. So what could cause suppression of your hypothalamus? So the number one thing that I want you to know about for tertiary adrenal insufficiency is somebody that takes steroids for a very long period of time. All right, so this is uh, somebody that takes steroids for a really long time. And so they're gonna have low levels of CRH, low levels of ACTH, and then low levels of their adrenals, obviously, too. All right, whereas what do you think the CRH level would be with secondary adrenal insufficiency? Well, the problem is right here in your pituitary. So the hypothalamus is fine. So you're actually going to make more CRH to stimulate that anterior pituitary. So your CRH levels would actually be elevated if you have damage to this anterior pituitary. So instead of memorizing this, just think about it through. So basically, I think, where is all this starting at? Your adrenal gland. So if you have primary disorder, it's primarily stuck in your adrenal gland is the problem. What's the step prior to that? The step prior is your anterior pituitary. Well, if it's secondary adrenal insufficiency, it's a problem with your anterior pituitary. So you're going to have problems releasing ACTH from there. Okay, so the ACTH is low, and it's not going to be able to stimulate your adrenals, so they're going to be low as well. So let's talk about tertiary. What can suppress your hypothalamus? This is patients that have chronic exogenous steroid use. Okay, so if you're chronically using steroids, you're going to suppress your hypothalamus. The hypothalamus then will not release CRH, which means you cannot stimulate your anterior pituitary to release ACTH, which then, of course, you can't stimulate your adrenals to release anything at all. Okay, so all these are going to result in adrenal insufficiency, um, but it's just one step prior for each one. Okay, so really, really, really important stuff to think about whenever you're hearing adrenal insufficiency. I want you to think about where it's coming from, what the causes are, and what you need to know. Okay, so now let's add in some bonus points here because there's a few things that are unique that you just need to commit to memory about these adrenal insufficiencies. So primary adrenal insufficiency, the mnemonic is P for primary, all right, and then P for it causes hyperpigmentation. So you get hyperpigmentation of your skin and mucosa. Okay, and so why is that? So first off, this is the only one with elevated levels of ACTH. That should spark a light bulb in your head that's thinking, well, what makes ACTH? All right, so if you remember, ACTH is made from something called POM-C. All right, so this is back to biochem. Uh, they sometimes throw this into the lecture, sometimes they don't. But POM-C stands for pro opio melanocorticotropin hormone. So POM-C. All right, so if you think about it, each one of these letters stands for something that POM-C makes. So the O stands for opioids. All right, so endogenous opioids are actually made from POM-C. It's made from the same exact thing that your ACTH is made from. All right, the M stands for melanin. All right, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. And then the C stands for corticotropin hormone. All right, which is basically your ACTH, adrenocorticotropin hormone. Okay, so if we say somebody has primary adrenal insufficiency, we said their ACTH ramps up in compensation. Okay, well, their ACTH is elevated. So how do you get more ACTH? You have to be making a surplus of POM-C to make the ACTH. Well, POM-C, when it gets cleaved up, so it's basically a polypeptide. All right, so it's a polypeptide and it's a long chain here and it's made up of three parts. So you have an opioid part, a melanin part, and a corticotropin hormone part. So you're making more of POM-C overall. Well, guess what? You're gonna make more melanin as well, right? Because if you make one, you have to make all of them. All right, so you make this melanin as well. So you get hyperpigmentation from all the melanin production. Again, this is a USMLE question. They say, why do people with 
Addison's have hyperpigmentation. It's because of POMC, the precursor. And then a question actually asks, which of the following shares the same precursor molecule as melanin? And so if you remember this question, you can think back to, well, I remember melanin came from POMC because I remember learning about the adrenal stuff. All right. And so the answer was actually an opioid. All right. So they, they were literally asking on a question, what does an opioid share as a precursor molecule? And it shares it with melanin. All right. So that's a really, really low percentage question that you're going to get because bar barely anybody knows that question when you get to your dedicated time period. Okay. So the only adrenal insufficiency with elevated ACTH is going to be primary, right? Because if you look at the rest of these, the ACTH is low for secondary and tertiary. So that's why primary has the hyperpigmentation because it's the only one making a crap load of POMC, which means it's the only one making more melanin. Okay. So secondary adrenal insufficiency. So how could you get damage to your pituitary? Well, there's a lot of autoimmune damage to pituitaries. There's a lot of tumors that can grow there. Anytime you hear pituitary adenoma, that adenoma, which is just like a tumor of your pituitary, it can get big enough that it can compress the ACTH producing portions of your pituitary. All right, so the tumor gets bigger and it's gonna damage that ACTH producing cell. Okay, the thing to know here is if you have low ACTH, you're not going to have any hyperpigmentation because you're not making this palm C. There's no signal telling you to make the palm C. So you have no hyperpigmentation with any of the other adrenal insufficiencies besides primary, which is from your adrenal gland. So if we go back up here, all this stuff we talked about with acute versus chronic Addison's, whether it's from tuberculosis, whether it's from autoimmune, whether it's from adrenal hemorrhage, these are all considered primary adrenal insufficiencies, okay? So if you have autoimmune destruction of your adrenal gland or tuberculosis destruction of your adrenal gland, these are things that are chronic, they take a while, you're gonna start to get hyperpigmentation, okay? But think about it. Acute adrenal hemorrhage from a Neisseria meningitis infection, that's so acute that you wouldn't have even had time to build up the hyperpigmentation. All right, so if I had to break this down here, the acute would have no pigment. And then these two chronic ones would have pigmentation. Because it's chronic enough that it can take the time to get pigmented. Whereas the acute hemorrhage, that's something that happens like the snap of your fingers. Your adrenal glands start bleeding out, basically. So you're not going to have time for your palm seat to produce so many times that you cause hyperpigmentation. All right, so if you can think through that, you can really nail these questions. Okay, um, if I said tertiary, so we said, remember, tertiary is from chronic exogenous steroid use. Who takes chronic exogenous steroids? Well, it's people that have autoimmune diseases usually. All right, and it questions them, it's going to be somebody with lupus or somebody with rheumatoid arthritis or somebody with gout or something, some kind of chronic inflammatory issue. And so they might not even tell you that patients are on the steroids chronically. So there's one question, and I kind of thought it was almost unfair, but it was really, really difficult. And it basically told you a patient that, was, that had lupus for 30 years. Okay, so they gave you all the classic signs. They gave you the rashes, the malar rash. They gave you the photosensitivity. They gave you everything, and you're thinking lupus. It's a home run question. All right, and then they say in the last sentence of the question, they say, and this patient has been treated with the appropriate medications for the duration of their disease. And you're like, okay, well, Sure, whatever. And you keep reading through it and you get to the questions and it looks like somebody that has suppression of their hypothalamus. And it was actually because this lupus patient has been treated with steroids for the last like 30 years that they suppressed their hypothalamus. But they don't come out and even tell you in the question that it was somebody using steroids. They just give you a autoimmune disease that you have to know is treated with steroids and you have to infer that because they were treated with the proper medications that that was the steroid use that caused this person to have adrenal insufficiency. So there's a lot of ways that you can really uh, get these questions from one topic to the next. If you can integrate it, you can usually solve these. All right, so how you can think about it is tertiary comes from treatment of another disease. So tertiary T for treatment from another disease. So that's the steroid use, okay? And so what happens here is 
You suppress everything. So you suppress CRH, suppress ACTH. Therefore, you have nothing from your adrenals. Okay, so that's your primary adrenal insufficiency, your secondary and your tertiary in a nutshell. Thank you guys so much for joining today. If you found that was helpful, find me on Instagram at Action Potential Mentoring and shoot me a DM saying what your favorite part of today's lesson was. If you have any questions or you'd like some personalized one-on-one assistance with preparing for the USMLE, learning what it takes to become a stellar applicant and matching it to your dream specialty, DM me the words VIP Mastermind. Again, that's VIP Mastermind. Talk to you soon.